What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the shop. My name is John McGrath and this is my channel Man in Shed. Now today is new tool day. I've just received a package from Workshop Heaven. I've bought a set of Japanese hand saws. I'll do a video on those later. And I've also bought a scary sharp sharpening system. Now I've never used this system before. This is going to be my first time seeing it. So what I'll do is I'll set it up. I'll show you exactly what I got in the box and I'll try and sharpen a plane blade with it. So this will be uh, my first impressions, my first attempt at using it. I wanna see if it's as good as it's supposed to be. I saw a video with Matthew Platt from Workshop Heaven demonstrate this thing and just showed just how quick and easy it was to sharpen a plane blade. I'm a little bit skeptical, so I wanna see this for myself. So without further ado, let's crack on. We'll open the box and we'll have a quick look in. Let's do it. Right guys, I've just opened the box. We'll take a quick look inside. I love new tool day. I mean, you have to be good to yourself because nobody else will, so why not treat yourself some, to some new tools every now and again. Now, like I say, I've bought some Japanese um, hand saws. I haven't even set them up or looked at them yet, but I will do a video of these later, but this is not what this is about. So uh, that will be in an upcoming video. This is about the sharpening kit. Now I bought the Magnum, I think, set. There's various different sets. Some come with guides, some come without guides, some come with more. Um, microfilm, that some come with less. You can check it out. I'll leave links to where I bought all this in the description below. So uh, yeah, let's crack on and see what we got. So first up is the honing fluid. Anyway, nice and simple. It's just straightforward honing fluid. I don't think there's anything too special about that. It just helps stop um, your tools and stuff from rusting. And it also just keeps the material that you're removing from your blades floating so it doesn't clog the grit. You also get a nice um, piece of leather here to set your glass on. It's uh, you probably won't be able to see this in camera, but it says Workshop Heaven on it there, so we'll set that to one side. Now, in this, I'm assuming, is the aluminum oxide paper or the microfilm. Yeah, so this is a um, micro finishing film from 3M, and that's what this system uses. So, you attach this to your float glass, and this particular set comes with some uh, let me see, so we have 40 micron by two, we have 30 micron by two, we have 15 micron sheets by two, and we have nine micron sheets by two, and then we have the super fine stuff, it doesn't, uh, doesn't even have any ink on it, because uh, that's how fine it is, and the ink will raise it that little bit, so it's unmarked. I'm not sure what microns this gets down to, but it's, it's something pretty ridiculous anyway. Uh, let's see, I think there's also a 100 micron one yeah, there is. So there we go. It also comes with a 100 micron sheet. So like I say, this is the Magnum set. And uh, yeah, we'll have a look at that now in a second. This is, I'm assuming then this must be our flow glass. So we'll break this out and have a look. Now flow glass is just glass that's been uh, floated when it was poured on top of liquid tin. And uh, that gets a super flat surface. The liquid tin is essentially the same flatness as the curvature of the earth. And over a short distance, that's extremely flat. And uh, it's an extremely cheap process. So you can get super flat bits of glass from float glass. I don't think it's tempered either because during the tempering process, it does uh, tend to warp the glass a small bit. So uh, you need to be careful with this stuff because it can shatter. well packaged. Better not rush and smash the glass, that would suck. It's a fairly hefty piece of glass. There we go, so that is our super flat piece of float glass that we fix our micro finishing film to. And uh, yeah, so we just sit this on our piece of leather here. Basically like that. Now, what I have to go do is cut this microfilm into strips that will fit on this glass, and then we will attach it to the glass, and we get sharpening. Let's do it. Right, just give you a little close up of this before I go sticking stuff all over it and possibly messing it up. This is our nice little leather sheet. It says Workshop Heaven Fine Tool here. This is our piece of float glass. You can see it's nice and thick. It's super flat glass and our micro finishing film paper there. You can see 3M, that's the 100 micron stuff. That's the coarsest stuff. Uh, and here is our 
own right. So let's just get the camera to focus on that guy there. There you go, you can pause it there and have a read of that if you so choose. And so what we need to do now is to take this guy, cut him into strips, and fit one of each onto this glass. Now, obviously, I want to make this the width of my widest plane blade, which I think is just over two inches, but I shall have to check that. Then I'll get it on the cutting mat, and I'm going to cut this with a knife and a ruler, and then we'll come back and fix it to the glass, and let's get sharpening. This should be pretty quick. Okay, so my widest plane blade is 16 millimeters, or roughly two and three eight inches. And uh, this is out of my number four and a half. My number seven is actually still the, is the same size. So I'm gonna cut each one of these strips just over 60 mil. There are seven different grades in total, and uh, you would fit seven on the front of that piece of glass. Um, just about, but there's nothing to say that you can't put three on one side and four on the other side, or six on one side and five on one on the other side, if you so choose. So let's just get, I'm gonna mark these out now at just over 60 millimeters, and uh, we'll just get cutting. Very simple. Okay, there we go guys, there's our seven different grits all cut to size. Now let's go fix these to the glass. Okay, so I can't actually get all my seven sheets onto one side of the glass. Um, so what I'm gonna do is fix these five to the front part of the glass, like so, and then we we'll stick these two to the back part of the glass. That should work. Something like that. Yeah. I think that's gonna work. Let's do that. Now, what do I need? Something to scrape these on. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, I can't find my scraper. Um, there is an actual roller you can get to roll these on. I didn't bother buying it. Maybe I should have. Just bear in mind, this is not a how-to video. This is just my first time messing with this thing. And uh, I'm gonna try it out and give you guys my first impression on it. So we're just gonna stick these on by hand and just rub them on. I can't see there being a problem, really. Let's just do it. And there comes the rain. Might be an ominous sign. <laughs> it's more than a bit fiddly to get this thing off. We can always uh, fast forward the video anyway if I'm here for the next 10 minutes trying to get the back off this thing. There we go. That works. Okay guys, there we go. So I've put five on one side and two on the other side, just rubbed it on by hand. Didn't really need the roller. There's not too much to it. Just a little bit fiddly to get the adhesive off the back of them. Just lay them down and make sure there's no air bubbles underneath. I'm just flatten it on. 
So now it should be a case of uh, let's get sharpening and see if this actually bloody works. Right, let's get sharpening. I'm going to sharpen the blade in my Stanley number no. four. It's a pretty old, pretty old one. This is a blade or a, a plane that I reconditioned. So it's a pretty old um, Stanley number no. four that was made in England. Like I say, it's an old blade. I have sharpened it before, but it needs to be resharpened. I'm going to use the Veritas honing guide. Um, I think you recommend that they use a, you use a honing guide with this system. You can do it freehand if you so choose, but I think a honing guide is the way to go. Now, it's not going to be a how-to video, like I said already. I've already done how to sharpen a plain blade and how to sharpen your chisels. This is just going to be me testing this. So if you want to see how to sharpen a plain blade or a review of this Veritas Mark II honing guide, I'll leave a link up here, as well as the one for chisel sharpening. I'll send that in up here. It'll also be down below. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do, use the exact same technique that I saw Matthew Platt use in the Crimson Guitar videos. Matthew is from Workshop Heaven, like I said before, and uh, he did a demonstration of using this. I'm going to use his exact same techniques, do exactly what he does. It literally takes about five minutes, and uh, we'll go use this plane on some wood and see if this works. So uh, let's get this set up. Right, we're set up, ready to go. I have my plane in my honing guide. I have it set to 25 degrees. I'm gonna start from the 100 micron and I'm gonna work my way down through these films. It's just gonna be using a little pipette that comes with it to drop some honing oil onto these things. And uh, it's literally just one or two passes on each grit is what I saw him do. So that's what I'm gonna do. And uh, we'll see if this sharpens the plane blade. Let's do it. Oh, let's just get a bit of honing oil on this guy. And the course is great. Now, it was literally, he just all backstrokes and um, yeah, one or two passes and just taking your time and being precise. And you can just wipe it off on your piece of leather then, which is handy. Yeah, I already have a bore across the back of that. I'm just gonna give it one or two more, just to be sure. Okay, let's work our way on down. Got a bit of honing oil there. This is the 40 micron we're onto now. Hey, looking good so far. This is, what are we on to now? 30 micron. Okay. And now we're down to the 15 micron. Let's get a bit of hole oil on that. I think this is where you begin to actually start polishing from. It's either from 15 or from nine microns on down, so. Just a couple of strokes on that. Okay, getting a good edge. I'm actually gonna just work my uh, bevel in the blade slightly now, so. Um, Again, I've done a plain blade shop in a video. I'm not going to get into this. This is just going to be my first impressions of using this thing. And back to center. Just to put a camber, I should say, in the blade. This has a camber roller, so I can, I can kind of put the same camber that's in the roller into my blade. Okay. And onto the nine micron then.
Okay, it's looking good so far. Let me see, you know, it's just mightn't be able to pick this up on the camera, but we'll see. I don't know if you guys can see the edge of that there. So you can see the difference between the two. I've put a secondary bevel on this blade camera. So you might be able to see that there. I'm starting to polish that edge. Okay, let's continue on. So, so far so good. And that's taken, now I know it's, as I'm explaining this, it's gonna look like it's taken a bit longer, but that's literally a couple of strokes on each piece of paper. And uh, away we go. Let's turn it over. Don't worry about getting the oil on our leather. That's what it's there for. I hope I have the pink and green order to work around here. But this stuff is super, super fine. Oh yeah, that's really putting a shine on that. Last one then. <laughs> That's pretty shiny. Again, it'll take me a while to get proficient with this thing, but uh for ease of use so far, it seems pretty good. Give me a look at the polish on this blade now. Come on, focus. So you can just, let's get the camera to focus. You can see the polished edge that it has just put on this blade. And we still have a super fine bore all the way along the back of it. Now, I'm going to use the ruler technique to flatten the back of the blade. And I watched Matt flatten the back of the blade after he sharpened it, which is the opposite way to what I normally do it as. But I'm gonna do what he did, and we'll see if it works. And he just basically put a piece of masking tape across the glass and used that as his ruler. He says that's enough, so I'll take his word for it. Uh, masking tape. Let's do it. We just put a piece of masking tape across this. And that apparently is enough to just to tilt your blade, to jig your blade up. I normally use a ruler to flatten the back of this. Now I flattened the back of this blade already, but as you can see, let's see if we can see that. It's got a bit of use, it's a bit rusty. So uh, we'll just look to polish, and make sure the back of our plane blade is flat. Like I say, I've done a plain blade sharpening video already. You just want to tilt that up. You don't want to flatten the entire back of your blade. That's not the point. The point is just to have from edge to edge behind your cutting edge, nice and flat. And uh, I think we'll just work from the 30 micron on down. Should be good enough. I'm not sure we need to polish this. And this is super small movements in a very small area, apparently. So let's just do that. You know, like I say, don't take this for gospel. I'm just doing exactly what I saw in the video. And we're going to see if this works. Okay, I'm a... Uh... Oh God, I'm getting super bright there. How do you do that? Okay, let's see. So you can see I am edge to edge. Now you can see the back of a plane blade is not flat. So when I put it against the glass, it's removing more on this side than this side. But uh, I'm edge to edge and that's all that matters. So now let's get this back in the plane and test it out. I'll just tidy up here first. Right guys, I have a piece of maple here. Maple is pretty hard stuff and uh, 
this is still has a very rough edge on it. Now normally I wouldn't use a smoothing plane to do such a rough edge. Um, I'd use it probably like a jack plane or a number five. And uh, yeah, but I want to test this blade, see what it can do. I want to see how smooth and flat I can get this piece of maple. So uh, it should be a good test of this blade and how sharp it is. So let's do it. Okay, we're taking shavings in the middle. So we know our camber is good at least. Bring it out just a touch. Now I'm not expecting to get silky smooth, big rolls of shaving off maple and also off such a rough piece of maple but uh, I'm expecting to get a nice smooth surface here, hopefully. It's doing a pretty nice job. Let me get you around for a closer look. Okay, it's a bit of a closer look there. You should be able to see it. You can see this thing coming smooth. So. Make sure we're even. Maybe. They are seriously wispy shavings. So I'm, I'm impressed guys so far. That took all of five minutes to sharpen this blade. I like it. We're getting flatter. As we start to flatten out now, we start to get longer and longer shavings. So uh, let's keep going. It's going through this maple like uh, butter, which is great. That's not bad, that's not bad at all. Silky smooth, I'll tell you one thing guys, I am pretty happy with that. Let's get a piece of ash. Okay, let's try a rough sawn piece of ash. Just for the crack, just because we can. See how this goes. Certainly sounds good. Lovely. Well, you're not going to sand it smoother than that. Maybe the camera probably won't be able to pick that up for you guys, but uh, yeah, that's pretty impressive. Right, guys, there we go. That is my first impression and first use of the scary sharp sharpening system. And I have to say, it does exactly what it says on the tin. That is pretty impressive. Um, you can probably do it even faster than what I've done it there. Again, I was trying to explain it. It was my first time setting it up, first time using it, first time even seeing it. 
So uh, from now on, it's going to be just a couple of minutes to sharpen my plane blades. I'm going to sharpen everything I have now on this thing. And uh, it seems to me to be a great system. Again, I'll leave links in the description below if you want to see um, a full tutorial on how to sharpen your plane blades. And I've also got one on how to sharpen your chisels using that Veritas honing guide system. There's also a review of that there. I'll also leave a link in the description to, it is Matthew Platt, yeah, Matthew Platt's video. He's the guy that sells this on, with True um, Workshop Heaven. So uh, he does a full tutorial on using this again. He explains why he uses the techniques he uses. I used his techniques today and they work. So I'm happy with that. This piece of ash is silky smooth with that smoothing plane. You would not need to touch this with sandpaper. You would actually ruin it if you touched it with sandpaper. It's not going to get smoother than that. And uh, the edge of this maple is the same thing. Again, silky smooth. Not an expensive plane, but that's a sharp edge. So it's pretty good. That's it, guys. Comments and questions below. Hopefully this has been helpful to you. Um, again, links to where I got all this stuff will be below. I'll have a video coming up on those Japanese hand saws just as soon as I set them up and get to use them. That'll be coming soon too. So again, thanks to all the new subscribers and I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Get sharpening. Take it easy.